Faithful 20809. Many people have asked, how does it uh, come about that we are faithful to God? What does it take? What are the rules? There is a verse in Reconcile Our Gospel of Thomas that does help us to understand this. It's verse number six. And this is what it says. Jesus' students asked him, should we fast? They're talking about being faithful to God, the rules. How do you want us to pray? Should we give money for the poor? What special foods should we eat? Um, the Jewish tradition had a lot of dietary rules. Uh, Jesus said, tell no lies. Do everything with love, because in this way all that was hidden will be obvious. Do not fast. You will sin. The one knows our bodies need nourishment. Prayer by formula will condemn you. Talk to the one from your heart instead. Do not give to the poor indirectly, because this will harm your soul. Give of your heart and self directly. When you go to another land, be respectful of their customs. Then if they accept you, eat what they offer you. This acknowledges their act of hospitality, which was very big in the Jewish tradition. Heal anyone uh, with them who is in need of healing. What you put in your mouth will not hurt your soul, which is referring back to the dietary restrictions. Uh, but what you say can poison your soul if it is not true or said with malice. This is very interesting because what Jesus did was explained that the Ten Commandments were basically it, along with the last commandment, which was the greatest one, to love each other as I have loved you. So basically, the rules are, there's only God. If you divide your interest among a, a bunch of gods, then something's wrong. You're dividing your attention, your energy, your focus. Um, don't worship other gods if you're worshiping God. Obviously, this is disrespectful. I'll talk about that in another uh, sermon. Don't hurt each other. Don't kill each other. Don't steal. Don't want something that belongs to somebody else. Now, this is, this is one of those fuzzy things that people say, well, you know, I hate. The, this person's uh, wife or husband is just too too good not to really be interested in, but, you know, I just won't do anything about it. You're still interested in them. Train yourself. Refrain from being interested in people who are not available. Because by being part of the community, if they are in a committed relationship, you are sinning by tempting them to dissolve or dilute the relationship that they have. Now this also goes along with lusting after people's property, like houses, money, cars, uh, jewelry. I've seen so many people say, oh God, if I could just have the jewelry that Mr. T wore, you know, all those chains, um, or look at a, a, a cathedral and go, you know, I wish our building looked like that. These are, these are not pure thoughts. These are thoughts that are sinful. These are thoughts that are not doing justice and honor to God, who said, there doesn't need to be a building. I'm in your heart. There doesn't need to be clothes because I will clothe you. The food that you need to maintain your body is not what you need to maintain your soul. What you need to maintain your soul is me. This is what God said. The beauty that we see in our world decorates us. It festoons our soul with color and wonder. We need to look at it through the eyes of a three-year-old who basically says, Wow, look at the box this gift came in. It is so cool. <laughs> They're not looking at the gift. They're looking at the box it came in. Well, God is the box it came in. He delivers blessings. And he 
he's still the one who delivered it. God bless the whole world. No exceptions. Until the last time.